Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. So, Kid Galahad defeats Claudio Marrero by an 8th round corner stoppage. Now, if there's any fight that sums up Kid Galahad, this was it. There were dirty tactics, excessive dirty tactics, fouling, mauling, forearms, you name it, Kid Galahad did it. But on the flip side, there were times where Kid Galahad had, had space, time, and he displayed some real good punch picking, and he showcased his talent and ability. You know, he kind of showed the best and worst of his game, his style in this fight. Early on, Kid Galahad was in charge. He was, you know, catching Claudio Marrero with the better shots. He was landing some pretty good jabs and some nice right hands out of the orthodox stance. And overall, in the early rounds, he was picking the better shots, but in the process, he was being very dirty. So when the guys come up close, you would see Kid Galahad jam the forearm into Claudio Marrero's face. He would bore in with the head. Sometimes he was holding a little excessively, and he was allowed to get away with it by the referee. Also, Kid Galahad was stepping on top of um, Claudio Marrero's lead foot, which kind of threw Marrero off balance. You know, Kid Galahad was very dirty in this fight, particularly early on. But in terms of who was landing the cleaner punches, it was certainly Galahad. I would have liked to have seen the referee intervene much earlier and actually warn Galahad about the fouling and maybe even, you know, deduct a point here or there because he was actually very excessive with it early on. In the early rounds, Marrero was competitive, but he was just a bit off a pace and he wasn't landing as many good shots as Galahad. I would have said round two was Marrero's best round and maybe he won that round, you could argue that, but that's the only round you can really argue that he won. Um, he was landing some good right hooks out of the southpaw stance. In the orthodox stance, Galahad had a low left hand and that allowed Marrero to um, catch him with right hooks over, over the top of Galahad's low left hand. So yeah, Marrero had success early, throwing single shots, mainly the right hook. Sometimes he got through with a straight left. But early on, while it was competitive, I felt Galahad was in charge. And after the third round, you could just see Claudio Marrero slowly break down, and Galahad, after round three, was basically in total control. And as the fight went on, Galahad was getting a bit less dirty. And when he had time and space, he was actually picking some really nice shots. You know, some beautiful jabs, which were snapping Marrero's head back. He, he was switching from orthodox to southpaw, landing good straight lefts out of a southpaw stance, good straight rights out of the orthodox stance. He was mixing it up up close with some nice uppercuts, uh, some good body shots as well. You know, as the fight went on, I think Galahad actually showcased more of his ability and he wasn't so dirty. And listen, when Galahad is actually fighting clean and when he's got time and space, I actually think he's quite a good fighter to watch. I do actually like his technique. He's got some good ability and he doesn't need to foul so much because he's got pretty good defence, he's got nice timing, he's got good footwork, nice reactions... He's got a lot of ability. I don't get why he feels the need to foul so much, to be honest with you. I can kind of understand if it's against a guy like Josh Warrington in his last fight, who's kind of rough and dirty himself. You know, he'll get up close, come in with a head, etc. He'll, he'll be rough and tumble. I can understand if you're trying to counteract a guy from doing it himself. Fair enough, but in this fight, there was really no need for it because Galahad was levels above, in all honesty. And I want to see Galahad box more and just rely on his ability rather than roughhousing and being dirty. Because at times it is excessive and it is ugly to watch, if I'm being honest. But yeah, as the fight went on, Galahad really took over. I think in round six, towards the end of the round, he actually hurt Marrero with a shot to the head. I forget which punch it was. And yeah, in round six, you could tell Marrero was done. He was just really demoralised. And he didn't really want to be there. And um, yeah, round seven, again, Galahad just outboxing Claudio Marrero. Same with round eight. And at the end of the eighth, while Marrero 
was in the corner waiting for the ninth round. He and his trainer had a conversation and they agreed to stop the fight. So Galahad wins this fight by an eighth round corner stoppage. And this fight was actually an IBF final eliminator, meaning Galahad is now mandatory for the IBF title. That, of course, was the title he fought Josh Warrington for a little while ago when he lost by a split decision. So he's in line to fight for that title again, and um, we'll see where he goes with that. Is he going to fight Josh Warrington again? We will see. Um, from what I've heard, the plan is to to make Josh Warrington versus Shakur Stevenson. Now, Stevenson is fighting fairly soon, and I'm assuming Warrington will have a, will have a defense soon as well. And in the summer... I could see Warrington and Stevenson having a unification fight. That seems to be the plan. You know, there was a lot of rumours of Warrington versus Stevenson in Leeds in June, July time. So I, I assume that's going to happen. And that means Galahad could be waiting a little while. So he needs to stay active in the interim. But one thing I will say, Shakur Stevenson himself has said he's not going to spend long at featherweight because he's outgrowing the weight class. What I would say is he's going to defend against Mariaga, he'll try and unify against Josh Warrington, and then he'll move up to super featherweight. And I believe Josh Warrington also could move up in weight after the unification fight against Stevenson, because Warrington, he's fought at featherweight for a long time, and I know he wants fights with the likes of Oscar Valdez, who's of course at super featherweight. So I wouldn't be surprised if... After the Stevenson-Warrington fight, providing it happens, I really wouldn't be surprised if both guys move up in weight after that fight and the IBF title becomes vacant. So you could actually see Kid Galahad fighting for a vacant IBF title. That, would, that, that really wouldn't surprise me, if I'm being honest. Maybe it doesn't pan out like that. Maybe Warrington and Stevenson doesn't happen. And in that case, you would assume Galahad would get a shot at Warrington again. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Galahad has to wait quite some time and then after the fact he may actually fight for a vacant title. Anyway, share your thoughts below. What did you make of this performance from Kid Galahad? Again, for me personally, I felt this fight highlighted the best and worst of Kid Galahad, to be quite honest. He showed some good ability, some good punch picking, but on the flip side, he was very dirty and I felt he was very excessive with it. I really wouldn't have been complaining if uh, Howard Foster took a point or two away. And that's another thing before we before we wrap this video up. I felt Howard Foster let Galahad get away with far too much. And he was a bit of a home referee as far as I was concerned. So I would have liked to see a better referee in this fight. But regardless, Kid Galahad won the fight and he pretty much won it handily. Share your thoughts below. Peace.